we're still in our call series. This lesson is called to support. This is lesson 11. Let's get started. You know, Jesus, in this time, he is traveling throughout Galilee, but we're going to focus this lesson on the people that is following him. We know he has a core group of disciples, but he has other individuals, especially women. They had opportunity to play a prominent role in Jesus' ministry. Now, the inclusion of women as the writer of Luke um, and the writer of Mark tells us is that it's kind of unusual. They are not, um, in addition to being wives, they are family members. One particular one, uh, female that we're going to talk about is Mary Magdalene. She was one of those women. You see, this is really unusual because the Jewish high council, the Sanhedrin, had no female members. Even the prominent sects, such as the Sadducees and the, Fa and the Pharisees, were made up of all men. No women were included. But yet the Savior, as he walked this earth and had people following him, there was a group of women. This is really great, and we're going to look at that here in this lesson, especially on Valentine's Day. So let's, let's get into it. First, we're looking at Luke, the eighth chapter. This is day by day. I'll underline some words here. Um, the first verses one through three, we're looking at women in Jesus' ministry. I want you to notice here, it says he continued calling uh, to plan, traveling from town to town, village to village, preaching God's kingdom, spreading the message. And there was 12 with him. A lot of times we overlook the next sentence. Notice there are some women, not one or two, more than three, but we name three here in his company. Mary the one called Magdalene. Now, in scripture, we have a whole lot of Marys. We have Mary, the mother of Jesus. We have Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus that Jesus wept and he loved so. Here, we see Mary, the one called Magdalene. She's the one that has seven demons and he cast those demons out of her. Now, Magdalene is, is not her last name. Magdalene identifies where she's from. She's from the city of Magdala. This is, that is not her last name. I just want to emphasize that. And we also have Joanne. Notice she's the wife of Sh Shazar, who is Harold's manager. His, her husband is over the financial affairs of Herod. And then there's Susanna, who does name her husband along with many others who are use their considerable means to provide for the company. So we have women in the background supporting the ministry of Jesus. That is really interesting to me. Mark says the same thing. He identifies those same women, Mary, Magdalene, Mary, James of the Less, and Joe. Joseph and Salome. Now, those women right here. The question that we're going to look at on Sunday is, in what ways can you improve your behind the scenes support of church ministry? We're going to dig into this a little bit deeper. Now, John picks this up again. I want you to notice how John says this in John 20, 10 through 18. He talks about women. Now, notice we have a sad scene here. Actually, we John picks it up and talks about um, the time of his crucifixion and his resurrection. Notice here it says, Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside of the tomb weeping. As she wept, she stooped, stooped down and looked into the tomb. So here's the setting. If you look at the verses ahead of here, um, starting with verse one and John the 20th chapter, you'll notice that Mary, again, Magdalene, Mary actually goes and she realized that the body is taken away. 
she goes and tells Peter. Peter and John and the disciples run and they go in there see there's no body. Then they leave. That's where we start here, verse 10. The disciples went away again to their own homes. But notice who is left behind, Mary. Notice what Mary sees. The next verse. She see two angels. They are in white and they are sitting. She did not recognize these as angels because she is sobbing and weeping so. Verse 13 says, they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. This is really interesting because she is talking to the angels and she does not realize that they are angels. Notice here, because they have taken away my Lord. You know, I really want you to look at this right here. Look at the word my, my Lord. And I do not know where they laid him. She's there wanting to prepare the body because he was, he, they hurried off the cross because of the Sabbath day. They were not able to prepare the body like they usually do. And she came that morning with the oil and spices, not realizing how was she's going to move that rock away. But when she get there, it's removed. She's weeping because there's no body there. The angel, she does not even realize that there are angels um, that's talking to her. But notice the next verse. Okay, now, when she said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing. But she did not recognize it was Jesus. He says the same to thing to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Let that resonate with you. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She's thinking it's a gardener, it's a helper, it's someone there to just clean up, not knowing who he is. And she says the same thing she said to the angels, if you have carried him away. Tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Now, notice what Jesus says. All he says to her is Mary. Can you imagine when he says her name, she turned and she looked and realized that it was the Messiah. She said, Rabboni, uh, Rabbi Rambana is, is Hebrew, uh, teacher, master. And notice what Jesus says to her. I want you to look at the how he personalized this. First, he says, do not cling to me. In other words, don't hug me because I have yet ascended to my father. Because you remember, he has to be a perfect lamb with no sin. So he, uh, 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 he comes out of the grave, he's resurrected, he's en route back to heaven, and he cannot be defiled. Saying, don't cling to me, don't hug me, because I have yet to ascend to my father. Once he offered himself to the defiled, we see where they're actually able to touch him because of Thomas, not realizing who he was, he said, come and touch my hand come and touch the side this is who i i am the one that was hung on the cross however what i want to emphasize here that i underline notice what he tells mary he says go to my brethren go to my brethren and say to them i like how he personalized this go to my brethren i am ascending to my father and notice how he said i'm ascending to my father and your father to my God, to your God. He's showing how Mary, you are in my family. I am returning back. I know you, Mary. You know me. That's what's so unusual about this scripture here. And then she leaves and she goes to the disciples and she says exactly what he tells her. So as we dig deeper, we're going to look at what ways can you help encourage the members of the church to adopt and develop that stay in power like Mary? Then we're going to.
little bit deeper. And we're going to look at ways, since Jesus has already knew the answer to Mary's question, what technique can you use to tell people how to counsel those grief-stricken people just like Mary was? Let's, 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 let's analyze the conversation between Jesus and Mary. So the question I have for you is, what is your part in God's story? How are you being used today? Are you being like Mary Magdalene, like the women who supported Jesus? So as we end, I want you to notice two things here. We often portray non-believers who come to church as seekers. And we say that those who seek Jesus will find him. Mary Magdalene was a seeker in a different sense, but she sought Jesus' body. Her quest was mistaken because there was no corpse. corpse. Try as she might, Mary did not find Jesus. Notice here, he found her. Jesus had first found Mary to deliver her from demonization, and then he found her weeping at the tomb. Have Jesus found us? Hey, thank you all for joining me. I have a thought to remember is Jesus knows where and how to find those who seek him. What are you doing today? Are we seeking him? to do his work. This is a great lesson. Thanks for joining me. We, we have our Zoom session. There's the meeting ID and that's the passcode. Hey, like I always say, see you in Sunday school.